Here's a question. How can I hold my breath for longer underwater? Most people that consider this come to the evidence-based conclusion that hyperventilating before diving allows a longer breath hold under the water. This conclusion is technically correct, but the reason why isn't common knowledge. In this video, we'll find out what's going on inside your body when you hyperventilate, and why doing so without understanding this might cause an abrupt end to your existence. A common answer to why hyperventilation works is more oxygen. This is common sense, the stuff that science, unfortunately, proves wrong every day. We could imagine any number of internally consistent accounts for why something is the case. What matters is that we test whether or not these accounts accurately map to reality. At rest, your blood is already 99% saturated with oxygen so hyperventilation cannot hyperoxygenate your blood. This seems counterintuitive, because you start to feel dizzy if you hyperventilate, and we have seen some anecdotal evidence that it prolongs breath holding. So what's going on? The oxygen-carrying molecule in all vertebrates, including humans, is an oxygen-binding metalloprotein called hemoglobin, made from four globin subunits, most commonly 2-alpha and 2-beta in adults. The exact amino acid sequences for these globin subunits varies between species, and the differences grow with evolutionary distance between species. We can actually visualize this divergence into the past by sequencing and comparing homologous hemoglobin subunits. The more recent our divergence, the more similar the amino acid sequence becomes, until the species with which we share the most recent common ancestor, chimpanzees, displaying the fewest sequence variations. When you breathe in, the hemoglobin protein reversibly binds one oxygen molecule to a single iron atom held at the center of each subunit. Each hemoglobin can therefore bind up to four oxygen molecules, and each red blood cell contains about 280 million hemoglobin proteins. Each human has between four and six trillion red blood cells per liter of blood, which are continuously manufactured at a rate of about 2.4 million per second. Add all of this up, and each human has 20 to 30 trillion red blood cells at any given moment, which is about one quarter of all the cells that make up your body and 40% of your blood by volume. But there aren't just empty oxygen slots waiting to be filled in all these hemoglobin proteins. They are always saturated as they pass through your lungs. If there's a higher oxygen demand, your body just increases the circulation rate. So then what does hyperventilation actually do physiologically? Why does this allow longer breath holding, and where is the risk? During a normal breath hold, it is the accumulation of carbon dioxide in your blood that triggers the breathing reflex before the oxygen content dips to critical levels. There are also sensors which monitor the partial pressure of oxygen, but carbon dioxide, being a waste product of cell metabolism, is directly associated with the actual metabolic demand for oxygen. As the demand increases, so does the need to inspire more air. Hyperventilation artificially induces a condition known as hypercapnia, a state of low blood carbon dioxide. This increases the amount of time you can comfortably hold your breath, not because of an increased amount of oxygen, but a suppression of the molecule used to sense oxygen demand. This means that you can actually run out of oxygen before you feel the urgent need to breathe. Most body tissues can still function at these lower oxygen levels, but your brain, and importantly your consciousness, can't. The critical hemoglobin oxygen saturation required for consciousness is about 50%. Below this value, you're on really shaky ground, and most people will black out. If this happens underwater, you will drown. The take-home at this point isn't necessarily a moratorium on hyperventilation to prolong breath holding but an awareness of what it is you are actually doing physiologically and the risks involved. The reason hyperventilation causes blood carbon dioxide levels to drop so dramatically is that the alveoli in your lungs, which mediate gas exchange with your blood, don't have an atmospheric composition. Normally, less than 10% of the gas in each alveolus is replaced with every breath taken, making the alveolus carbon dioxide partial pressure quite high compared to the outside air. But deeper or quicker breaths from hyperventilation causes more than 10% of the alveolus gas to be replaced by air, 
which drops the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveolus, drawing more carbon dioxide from the venous blood. This is the first video on this channel to be supported by you through Patreon. If you enjoyed it and want to see more, click that thumbs up. But for those of you who'd like to see your name in the end credits of an evolutionary biology video, check out this channel's Patreon page through the link in the description. Thanks for watching.